Welcome to the Pennsylvania Fly Fishing Museum here in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. I'm Bill Skelton and I've been in the fly fishing business for over 50 years, tying flies and selling classic fly tackle. Uh, this is our Hall of Fame. This is me, a few of my flies and materials, some ants and beetles, yellow jackets, and I'd be glad to show you other things in the museum today. One of the main reasons Pennsylvania is so rich in fly fishing history is its streams. The streams are compatible with what the trout need. They're cold, pristine water 12 months out of the year. We have the Latorte Spring Run directly behind our museum. We have Big Springs Creek up in Newville, Pennsylvania. We have Falling Springs in Chambersburg. We have Green Springs. Carlisle, Pennsylvania has numerous limestone streams. The ideal limestone stream stays 55 to 65 degrees 12 months out of the year. That's why the trout like the streams and that's why people from around the world come to Carlisle, Pennsylvania to fly fish. This is Vincent C. Marinero's room. Uh, 18 years ago when the Pennsylvania Fly Fishing Museum started, this is the first individual collection that was purchased. And the reason why Vince was so influential in the fly fishing business, uh, basically 60 years ago he wrote the first book, A Modern Dry Fly Code, which is a classic today. Uh, 20 years later he wrote In the Ring of the Rise, which is also a classic today. Uh, Vince was known for fly tying techniques, fly fishing techniques, fly patterns. He also, as an amateur, built bamboo rods that are very desirable and collectible rods today. You pay an absolute fortune if you can even get one of his rods. He did things by hand, the old way. In the museum we show you techniques in rod building where he built on an ironing board and a picnic table in his backyard in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. We have his tools in there, we have his fly tying vices. He was a wonderful photographer, uh, showed theories and techniques of trout rising to various flies in the local stream here, the Latorte. <laughs> Joe Humphreys from the State College area is uh, now a retired professor. He's a fly fisherman, uh, author, conservationist. At one point uh, in the 70s, he had a record Pennsylvania brown trout from the State College area. Uh, he taught Penn State angling at State College for over 20 years. We have a nice display here of some of his flies and some of his fishing equipment. This is Ed Shank, a good friend of mine, lives in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, uh, noted for uh, fly fishing, author, conservationist, also very much popularized the short bamboo and short fiberglass fly rods, uh, four and five foot fly rods, again catch and release, also uh, noted for developing fly patterns, excellent fly fisherman, developed a Latorte cricket and a Latorte Shanks Latorte hopper and a sculpin and crest bugs and uh, quite a few fly patterns. Uh, probably fly fish 70 plus years. This is Ed Koch from Carlisle, Pennsylvania, and then later Bowling Springs, Pennsylvania. Uh, very well known author, uh, specializing techniques, midge fishing. Wrote his first book in the early 70s, fishing the midge, then went on to write books and develop patterns on terrestrials. Again, an advocate of very short fly rods, five and six foot fly rods, and um, started in the 60s, right in the middle of Carlisle, uh, called Latorte brand, which was kind of interesting. Um, some of that equipment's very desirable for collectors at this point. He also caught a very large trout in the early 60s, a nine pound brown trout that was a considered a record brown trout on a dry fly in Pennsylvania. Many of the individuals we have on display here at the museum are authors. 
Um, they wanted to share their ideas with other individuals. Uh, fly tying techniques, fly fishing techniques, um, things they may have specialized in. Other individuals we have here, we have artifacts on numerous individuals that never wrote an article, never had a book published, but they contributed to the sport of fly fishing. Uh, this display is Charlie Fox's from Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Uh, beautiful display, uh, artifacts in both fly fishing and bass fishing, plug fishing. Uh, Charlie was a conservationist, a naturalist, fly tire, uh, wrote numerous books on bass fishing, lures, fly fishing, uh, had preached conservation uh, 60 years ago. He was a trendsetter in conservation. Uh, we have his log book from his salmon fishing, the Miramichi, for 40 years. Uh, we have some interesting artifacts. We have a river keeper from England that came in and talked to Charlie about spawning beds for the trout and stream improvement in his own backyard, and that was the La Torte Spring Run in Carlisle. You remember I just spoke about the fishing log on the Miramichi River in Canada with Charlie Fox. Now this is Chauncey Lively's display. Uh, here is the old school of cursive writing your fishing trip, your daily fishing trip, the camaraderie with your friends, how many fish you may have caught, but also just uh, the weather and the type of insects and the flies that you were fishing to catch those trout. Uh, this kind of predates the smartphone of showing pictures and photos of your catch. Again, this is Chauncey Lively's display. Uh, innovative fly tire and angler. Uh, beautiful wall display uh, showing his fly box book authored about 30 years ago. It's um, something he did from the Pennsylvania Angler where he had a column for over 30 years and he compiled all of those columns, came up with a fantastic fly tying book. We have his cameras in here. He was a phenomenal photographer. And again, uh, Pennsylvania fly fisherman. This is Ned Smith's display from Millersburg, Pennsylvania. Ned Smith is a very famous wildlife artist from this area of Pennsylvania. They have a Ned Smith Wildlife Museum Center up in Millersburg, Pennsylvania, with many of his originals and prints on display. Ned Smith did the cover of Pennsylvania Game Magazine for 30 plus years. Uh, we have his paintbrush, original paintbrush here. We have trout flies that he tied, a few of the books that he wrote, and then a few books that he illustrated. Okay, the Pennsylvania Fly Fishing Museum is open nine to six every day. You're welcome to come in here, fish the Latorte behind the museum, sit down in the library, read a book, look around. Pennsylvania Fly Fishing Museum is nonprofit. There's no admission charge, and we hope to see you soon.